Everybody, Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Tuesday here on this program, and we've got a lot to talk about here today, including Monday Night Raw last night. We'll talk about that later. We've actually got a lot of other big news on top of that. Becky Lynch, as noted, separated her shoulder in that match with Bianca Belair. And now, unfortunately, it looks like she is expected to be out several months. And so, two things. Number one, it does not appear it was a minor shoulder separation. And number two, holy smokes, she is tough. I'll, I'll talk about this more after the break, because uh, as I mentioned, I separated my shoulder twice wrestling. So I've got, I got a lot I can say about this one. AW's first ever console game, now available for pre-order. $59.99 U.S. for all consoles and PCs. We can tell you about that. More notes from Ric Flair's last match, which took place on Sunday night, including Flair appears to be okay. We're now two days after the match, and he seems to be all right, so that's, that's good news. Certainly didn't look all right in the match. We have the Rampage ratings. I know people don't like to talk a lot about ratings, but this is a story. This show tanked. So we'll tell you about that. We got SmackDown ratings as well. Brian Danielson talks about the Talking Smack segment with The Miz and what the original plan was. It was all a work. For those of you that still cling to it being real, it was all a work. But it, it was not exactly as it was supposed to go. So we'll tell you about that. NXT lineup for tonight. And as noted, Raw on Monday night. And I got something I say about Raw. When we come back from the break, because there's a talking point all over the internet that I'm just a little bit baffled by. And then we'll get in all of the other news. So stick around, everybody. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Observer.com. I got a lot of news we're going to get into today, but I, I got to start with this because I've seen this all over the internet, including on our board. I've seen it on the chats here. And it is this. Uh, this deal, you know that Raw show last night wasn't bad at all. It was actually a pretty good show. And now the the big talking point on the internet is, oh, now everyone's going to have to dissect every small little change to the show. And, you know, oh, you know, just because the show's a little better doesn't mean it's great. And what? Listen, everybody, you all everyone can have their opinion about Raw. If you still don't want to watch Raw, fine, okay? Fine. But to get upset that I, for example, am excited about little changes on the show, get out of here. I'm excited. Dude, any positive little change to that show, I'm excited about. If you're not, that's fine. But don't get mad at me about it. Bro, I've been watching this show. I've been watching this show since... 1991, or whenever this show debuted. It was 1991, right? 1993. 93? Whenever it was. I should know that since we're reviewing the 93 Raws. But the point is, I've been watching this show since 1993. I was a senior in high school. Now I'm practically on Social Security. I've been watching this show for a long time. And at the beginning, it was, you know, for the time, I enjoyed it. I was a kid. I watched the shows, and there was nothing to compare it to. It's not like I'm, you know, I wasn't getting tapes from New Japan or anything or All Japan yet. I was watching the show, and it was fine. Then we had the Monday Night Wars, and things were awesome. Then I had to suffer through World Championship Wrestling. Then WCW got sold, and WWE screwed up this invasion. They ran off millions of fans, and then the show wasn't what it used to be. But it was all right, because you had a lot of talent. You had Eddie Guerrero's and Brock Lesnar's and Kurt Angle's. And, you know, we're not supposed to mention his name, but in the wrestling ring, Chris Benoit put on a lot of good matches. So we had all that for a while. And then, eh, about uh, 2010, 2011, it started to kind of, eh, it wasn't as good as it used to be. Then we went to three hours. And, yeah, three hours is way too long. And for a little while, it was all right at three hours. But then, you know, eight, nine, ten months, twelve months later... The show's just too damn long. And then, and then, the fall of 2018. Coinciding, by the way, with the eventual rise of Becky Lynch. 
But uh, the summer and fall of 2018, this show went off the rails. Why? I don't know. What happened to Vince? I don't have any idea. Maybe we'll never know, okay? But from 2018 to 2022, yeah, mostly 2021, it got a little bit better, you know, the last six months or so before they got rid of Vince. But for at least three years, though, this show was so horrible. And I don't care what anybody says. It was on par with not the worst of WCW, okay? But it was on par with WCW when it was going down. And they were lucky that they were idiot-proof because it was so bad. And I ranted about this show for three years. What a horrible show this was. I was begging for them to get rid of Vince. Well, finally they get rid of the guy. And it's only been about two weeks now. But dude, it's better. It's not stupid. It's not nonsensical. Yeah, it's too long and if you want to complain about this little thing or that little thing, whatever. But, dude, I'm going to be excited about anything on this show that's better. I got to watch it every week. You geeks on the Internet that watch your clips or whatever, and you watch this here or there, and you pontificate. I got to watch this show every single week. So, bro, if there's 540 camera cuts in one match last week, and there's 539 this week, there's one less cut. You don't have to celebrate that, but I am. Golly. It's just like NXT 2.0. And when NXT 2.0 started, that show was abysmal. It was atrocious. It was appalling. It was horrible. Now, it's actually better. I don't want to hear, well, uh, better still sucks. Okay, fine. Don't watch the show then. But I got to watch the show every week, and the show's better. So, I appreciate that. Got it? What in the world happened to this world where all of a sudden there was no such thing as subjective opinions anymore? Everything had to be objective. If I don't like it, you're not allowed to like it. And if you like it, there must be something wrong with you. No, that's not how it is. Everybody has an opinion. It's been like this for uh, 1.5 million years since man walked. There was one man who goes, no, I don't think we should uh, harness that fire. You can burn stuff down with that. What if, we, what if we build a house out of sticks and that fire burns the house down? He had a dissenting opinion. But you know what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it was the right move to harness fire. I don't know how I even got to that part, but the point is, I like these changes to Raw. I think it's better, and I am going to log every last single positive thing about this show, and I'm going to appreciate it. Because I live a life of appreciation, unlike some of you. Any thoughts, Mike? Nope. God. <laughs> what about those people who would say when it comes to NXT, maybe it's because you've become conditioned to what they've been giving you and your values Bro, and your senses have slipped. No. You want to go back? Why don't some of you guys think it's not better? Go back and watch, you know, September, October, November of NXT 2.0 and then get back to me. That's all I'll say about that. Now, let's talk about some news here so I don't have to blow my stack anymore because I get hot because it's summer up here. Becky Lynch will be out several months after suffering a shoulder injury. Suffered it during the Bianca Belair match. Had her arm in a sling on Monday. Announced she was leaving for a while. Then they did an angle where Bailey, Kai, and Sky I don't know what their name is going to be, but they got to come up with something. They ran in. They beat her up. They hit her shoulder with a chair. She's out for a while. So, as I talked about a couple of days ago, there's, there's low-grade and, uh, and high-grade uh, shoulder separations. Kota Bushi got the worst kind you can get. It's been, like, how long has it been that Cody Ibushi's been out? <laughs> a long time. Like eight months or something check. like that? He's still, crazy, he, he still yeah. can't lift weights, okay? And who knows? I mean, this may, he may never come back. If it's been this long and he still can't lift weights, I don't know, dude. But uh, I separated my shoulder twice. One was not too bad. One was really bad. And, uh, and one, of those, one of those times I separated, I had a match the next day. And it was with Buddy Wayne and Richie Magnet, who were the two lightest, easiest workers. And so what happened was they jumped me at the bell, and I held my arm like this. I sold the entire match. I didn't move my arm at all. They took care of me. They protected me. And I think I actually won the tag team titles that night, believe it or not, which is probably why I didn't take the night off. But anyway, Becky didn't do that. She didn't put her arm like this and not move her arm. Dude, she worked that whole match, and she she was... Up, down, moving, lifting, throwing, bumping. That's, she's the man. Yeah. I mean, holy smokes. And she talked last night about the pain that she was in. 
And if you've never separated your shoulder, you don't know that pain, but it sucks. And uh, she made it through that whole match because she hurt her shoulder early. And she still made it through the entire match. So, I mean, I got nothing but respect for Becky making it through that match. The bad news is she probably made it worse by doing that, quite frankly. So, you know, they're, they weren't going to end the match when she got hurt. But if they had, who knows? She might have been back much sooner. But that's what they do. And that's what she did. And it was nutty. Now the most important thing is just make sure you come back when you're 100% because the problem with things like shoulders are once you do that, it makes it a lot easier to have problems later on down the line. You got a cousin that would have issues with dislocated shoulders, would pop it out and back in, and just had all sorts of issues once he had it separated. So it just hopefully she can be out for when she needs to be, because whenever she comes back, it's going to be, you know, a, a welcome change of pace. But it's also now in time we see Dakota Sky, we see EO. Let's get this woman's division up. Let's get some people. It's up Dakota from NXT. Kai and EO Sky. Kai and Sky? Well, you said Dakota Sky. Did I? Yeah. We need we need something with this group here because Still getting used Dakota to this, Kai, yeah. EO Sky, the Queen of the Shirai. They won't go back to never mind. I had to, never mind. But look, <laughs> get these some of these women up. Obviously, they're doing what they're doing now, which is a nice change of pace, which is something no one can disagree with you on. Back in a moment. AW video game. Observer Live. Well, AW's first ever console video game is now available for pre-order. You can purchase on Amazon, PS4, PS5, Xbox, PC, Nintendo Switch. I don't know what any of these things are. Release date of December 31, 2022 is listed. A description of Fight Forever lists the following features. Combines nostalgic arcade wrestling feel with innovative all-elite wrestling finishers and offensive moves. Offensive moves. I don't think they're <laughs> offensive. Some of them are. Talent roster combines biggest legends to enter the ring, plus brand new high-flying AEW stars. Single, tag team, three-way, four-way, ladder, casino battle royal, falls count anywhere, and sanctioned lights out, exploding barbed wire death. <laughs> Doesn't say death <laughs> match, by the way. Exploding barbed wire death is one of the options. And online co-op multiplayer matches. And then it adds online co-op multiplayer. They said that twice. Tag team matches feature a sequence of team maneuvers performed with simple commands. Fifty nine ninety nine. Don't know anything about video games. I couldn't I couldn't tell you, you know, anything past about uh Super Mario Brothers two over my head. Yeah, but do you ever do you ever go to the arcade and play like WWF superstars or anything? Dude, I went to the arcade, I mean they didn't have that back then. WrestleFest? No, the the best I could get at the arcade was pro wrestling. Uh, with uh you know star man and the amazon it, it chomped you <laughs> and in case you didn't know you were being chomped they put the word chomp on the screen as he's biting your neck but anyway it was a very you know it was like a one bit video game so uh this is a big thing for AEW and they banked a lot on this video game as i think that everybody is well aware and uh Obviously, if it does great, then uh, that's great for AEW. And if it doesn't, that would be bad. How's that for some analysis right there? I know that's uh, that's common sense, but... Deep, bro. Uh, there, there, was, there was millions and millions and millions and millions of money that they dumped into this game. <laughs> yeah. Millions of money and time spent. Millions of, of, of dollars, money. You know, eight bit, eight bit dollars. But anyway, hopefully it does well. Because let me tell you something. You know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, mm -hmm. but my God, this rampage number, <laughs> dude. Rampage in its normal time slot, and there was not a ton of competition. Did three hundred and seventy five thousand viewers, a point one one in eighteen to forty nine. Males 12 to 34 did a point oh two, a point oh two, and Dave had another stat last night that's not here, but I mean, in I think it was like uh, 25 to 34 or something like that. 
I mean, it did like lower than NXT 2.0 has ever done. This show died. And I don't know. Were all the kids watching the roast of Ric Flair? No, that's not what happened. <laughs> what happened was they didn't want to watch this show. What happened was the thing that we've been talking, there, there, there are two factors here that we've been talking about for a while. One of those is they were preempted so often that no no it's, that, it's too late for that i'm sorry no, you're right no you were right about habits but brian come on no hold on there's Their more base, oh, look, can I, base... I said there's two things can i get to oh, the two come things on. go ahead one is that they got bumped around so often that there were people that just got out of the habit of watching on fridays that's one and the other thing is dude this is not an a show this is not a b it show is. this is a c show at that and, you know, there's good wrestling, but we, we talked about this the other, like two weeks ago on the Brian and Vinny show. I enjoy the show. I enjoy watching Rampage, but there's nothing must see about it. And, you know, one of the things that no one ever mentions, but, but, uh, but I, I'm going to mention it here. So a lot of people talk about live and tape to this day. Oh, well, you know, a tape show is not going to do as well as a live show. And the fact of the matter is, they they do it the same. If if you if you tape Rampage or if you air Rampage live, if you tape Dynamite or you do Dynamite live, it's going to do virtually the same number. And the funny thing is, more often than not, the tape show does a little bit better than the live show. But we have this thing dating back to the Monday Night Wars that if you tape a show, it's not going to do as well. That's not true. But to me, here's the key. It doesn't matter if it's live or taped if a fan tuning in doesn't know if it's live or taped, okay? If you if you go raw, if you go live with raw, and then the next week you go live to tape to raw and you air it and you know, your average person that doesn't know anything is just watching it, it looks exactly like the same. It doesn't matter one bit. But there's a thing about Dynamite where the way that they cram things into that show and the way that they put the show together it feels like a taped show. It doesn't feel like a live show. We, we, you know, the show begins, there's already a match in the ring. And then the match is over, and there's just something about the show where it feels like a taped, pre-produced show. And I do think that that hurts people's interest in the show. That does keep people from thinking it's an A show. Not because it's taped, but because it feels like a taped show that was put together as content on a Friday night. That is not going to get people clamoring for this show, especially with some of the lineups they've had for Rampage. Remember when people would get mad when I would read the lineups because they thought I was giving away spoilers and everything like that? I haven't heard that in a while. I haven't even bothered to do Fauntleroy. I don't know what the uh, I don't know what's happened, and I don't know what the solution is. I have a couple of theories, but do you have any thoughts first? Everything you just said negates why the whole deal about it being knocked out of position so many times. There's not a steady diet of stars. It does something about it doesn't feel right. And I and I absolutely know what you mean when it comes to the production there. There's nothing happening on it that resonates outside of that show that really sends a ripple effect. And they have got to do that because they did lose all that time. But you've had plenty of time now where your show on Wednesday is doing between 900,000 and a million people the same way it was when it's at its peak, at its best. You need to figure out a way to turn those people into Friday because that's where you're stuck. That's where you stuck yourself. That's the deal. So you need to figure out how to make this work and how you make it work. Is it making it live more often and in, in eating that production cost and eating the building cost? So you can generate some buzz behind it. Is it, and I, I'm not saying keep Brian Danielson or, or somebody off of Dynamite, but like really making sure that there are, are names people want, Danielson, Punk, whoever moves a needle, Moxley, whoever it is right now, Orange, whatever, those people around there, maybe a big match, a, 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 a 
title defense or whatever goes on there and it's built something has got to give because if you can't get off of friday you have to stop using the excuse well it was out of position for so long because that doesn't matter their their own but it fans does. are their hold on if their dvr number is dynamite on saturday morning that's a little bit of a different story but if you're not giving your own fan base any reason to go over there and they're not looking as for any reason to go over there you can c- complain about we were knocked out of position all you want you've had all of this time and people are still not buying that's that's the bookmaking that's all of that stuff it's not being knocked out of position in the habit but, not now but it's been too long no listen here's the point it's all of those things and here's the issue If that thing gets knocked out of position and you don't watch it because it was preempted and then you watch Dynamite and then the next week you don't watch it because it was preempted and you watch Dynamite. But Brian, hold on, hold on. There's two things. There's two things that are going to happen. Number one, you're going to get out of the habit of watching on Friday nights. That's number one. And number two, you're going to realize, well, I don't need to watch the show because I missed it the last two weeks it was preempted. And it didn't affect my, my – like somebody here goes, well, you know, they did shoot an angle that set up Chris Jericho and Yuta for the uh, title shot on Wednesday. Yeah, they did. They did shoot an angle on the show. But if you didn't watch Rampage, does missing the angle setting up that match affect your, your, inter, your, your uh, interest in Dynamite one bit? No. You tune into Dynamite. You find out that they set up a match between Jericho and Yuta. And if Yuta wins, he gets a title shot against Moxley. But you don't you need people... to watch Rampage for that. So it but doesn't you... matter that my point is it doesn't matter that they shot an angle on the show. You could miss it and it doesn't matter. But if you gave them a steady diet of that and a reason to tune in and a reason to, oh, something's going to happen here and get people out of that malaise, I mean, that's their job now is to get people out of that malaise. And they haven't done it. And it's got it, that comes from booking. That comes from what you're putting on the screen. And yes, the stuff from before about people getting out of the habit that was a part of that. But they knew when they were coming back on, and they knew when they were going to have clear sailing. And have they taken advantage of that time in the last? What has it been now? Two months? Two full months? No, they haven't. Period. Point blank. I, you're welcome to think that we're going to disagree, but it does happen. You get out of the habit, and you. I understand. And there's a that, lot Brian, of people, but at this point, it's been ten weeks or whatever it's been. You've been getting good numbers on Dynamite, yet you still have not figured out a formula, whether it be go live, whether it be cranking as many big names on there as possible. To me, that's the only thing you're going to be able to do. And even then, because of the time slot. Because of where it's positioned, they're still going to have problems. They're, so they're going I don't to even have think problems. they've thrown everything at the wall, though, But because they're going to have to. They, they are going to have problems, but the fact is we saw this show do great numbers on Friday night at 10 o'clock. We saw it. There is a way to get people to watch on Friday night. What they're doing is not the way to get people to watch on Friday night. They need to build up angles where the payoff is on Rampage. Not an angle on Rampage to get the payoff on Dynamite. Because if that's the case, you can skip Rampage. Back in a moment, Observer Live. I'm doing the hey, Raw Brian, report. Before you do that, what about people who say it's a one-show promotion? They should only have one show nationally going on at one time. What do you think about that? Why? Do these, do these people understand that uh, the more shows you have, the more money you make, and the more if you big take stars that out of the mix. Now, the if, if if the world was perfect and you took that out of the mix and that didn't matter, do you think they would be better off with one show? Or, or obviously, well, at look- this point, they are basically a one show promotion. That's the point. That's the point. Rampage, rampage, right now is 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 dark or elevation. Where instead of having just big stars having squash matches, you do have big stars facing off against each other. But we are we are past the point where if you put big stars on the show in great matches, it's just going to do well. There's we we've seen we've got years of great wrestling. You get you get great wrestling on Dynamite. You know, look at the crossover with uh, Dynamite and Forbidden Door. You get great wrestling if you're a New Japan fan. And, you know, there are now these ROH pay-per-views that they're putting on that have great wrestling. And, you know, WWE, say what you want about this Raw, but there was some good wrestling on this Raw show. I mean, you need more than, at Friday at 10, two stars are going to have a great match. 
Brody and Darby. Dude, I love that match. And what what did I what what happens if I miss that match? Nothing. Nothing. I just missed a good match. Yeah, they're they're going to use that to build up a coffin match, which is probably going to be on Dynamite, uh, the big Dynamite show. So at the end of the day, you know what what did I miss? Other than as a fan, I really liked the match. But how how is my life as an AEW fan changed if I missed it? Not at all. Not at all does it change that I missed that a, a really good match. You have to have more than that. If they built up, if they built up on Dynamite for six weeks, a Brody King, a Darby Allen feud, and it was going to culminate in a coffin match on Rampage. Now we're talking. Now, if people are invested in that feud over six weeks, they will watch Rampage to see the blow off. But angles on Rampage to set up matches on Dynamite. Even great matches on Rampage to set up matches on Dynamite. It ain't it ain't gonna work now. We're we're past that, unfortunately. Star, stars and surprises are needed. Y- yeah, Pay, payoffs are needed. Payoffs That's what's needed. needed. Yes, payoffs are needed on the show for things that are that are probably set up on Dynamite. Now we're opening up with Becky Lynch coming out, where she admitted she admitted she had been a horrible person. And she flat out told us it was time to be a babyface again. No more stupid outfits, she said. She's just going to be the man. But unfortunately, she is injured. And she called out Bianca. They hugged. She told Bianca that we'll, uh, I'll see you again down the road, hold down the fort. And uh, she leaves. And then Bianca's doing a promo. And as she's doing this promo, they cut backstage. And Bailey, Kai, and Sky have beaten up and destroyed Becky Lynch's shoulder. And so Becky will be out of action for a while. But it was a good interview segment. Did you like the fact that Bianca ran to the back twirling her braid? Well, that's, that's the only way she knows how to run. That's, you know, to people talk about, hey, they put a battery in my back, you know, to fire me up. No, she's got the old crank method. That's how she gets anywhere. <laughs> we, had, uh, we had two three-way matches, two triple threats. The winners would face off, and the winner of that will get a shot at Bobby Lashley's U.S. title next week. And so, to get it over, they had a video package of all sorts of former U.S. champions in both NWA, WCW, WWE, and it was a uh, good little video package. We had a Logan Paul babyface promo vowing to be back, which the people in the crowd actually cheered. So, we may have turned a corner with old Logan Paul for the time being. First triple thread match, AJ, Ali, and The Miz. They got nine minutes. It was a good match. AJ and Ali were really good together, and the finish was great. Ali hits the 450 on Miz, but he pops to his feet right upside down into the Styles Clash. AJ gives him the Styles Clash onto Miz, pins Ali, and so AJ advances in this little mini tournament here. Had some backstage interviews, and then Seth Rollins comes out, and he's making fun of Riddle, calling him an idiot. Out come the Street Profits. And the Street Profits, they want a match with Seth Rollins. And, you know, Seth is, says, you know, you guys are losers. You gonna, why don't you go lose to the Usos again? And Montez says, aren't you a guy that lost to Seth Rollins with one booby? His delivery was better than it sounds, and it actually got a big pop. So they are going to do rock, paper, scissors to see which one of them gets to face Rollins. And right as they're about to do the game, Montez cheats on his partner, grabs a ref, sprints to the ring, and so he gets the match. That was interesting. They also once again acknowledge, Seth goes, maybe you guys should just break up. So I don't know what's going on, but they're certainly teasing that. So with Seth Rollins, Montez Ford, it was good because Seth Rollins is great. Montez needs a lot of singles matches if he's going to be a single star. Because he looked like a tag guy doing a singles match. But they gave him a lot, and the announcers played it up like it was a star-making singles performance, even though Seth beat him at the end. Uh, Ford went for the big splash. Rollins got the knees up, hit him with the uh, curb stomp, pinned him. Goes through it again. Dawkins runs him off. So, obviously, it's setting up Dawkins and Seth Rollins. We had Alexa and Asuka. They went two minutes. All of the other women ran in. And clearly, uh, and then Bel Air made the save to set up Bel Air, and she said, any of you three, and uh, it was accepted by EO Sky. 
had a Chad Gable promo, which led to Ciampa, Chad Gable, and Dolph Ziggler. They got 10 minutes. This was also a very good match. And they have, you know, Hunter's in. Ciampa's his guy. And so this show was all about, hey, listen, you guys that have watched Ciampa be just a total nothing happening afterthought geek on this show. He's actually great. And so that was the point of this uh, show, really. And he ended up getting the win here with the uh, running knee, the fairy tale ending on Chad Gable. So he goes on to face uh, AJ Styles later. Edge promo. Guys, remember those horrible Edge heel promos we had to put up with for, you know, two months or whatever? Oh, he's a babyface now. He comes out. He says, I was a real jerk. I was trying to get these young guys over. The first thing they did was turn on me. So now I will kill what I have created. I will end the judgment day. And he was done. Got in, got out. Good promo. Still looks like DDP. But hey, it's not a negative. We had uh, clips from the the cursed tryouts. They didn't show uh, any of the people who got injured. We had Bianca and Io Sky. They did go to a no contest again when all of the women ran in. And it was a bad finish, but it was a good match. Bianca and Io, the former Io Shirai, getting 17 minutes on Raw. Did a lot of good stuff. All the women ran in. We had a huge brawl. Crowd chanted, let them fight. So clearly they're, they're all in on this women's division. And we're going to see a lot of tags and six persons and singles matches and... That's going to be the focus of the show coming for the next uh, few months here. We had Ciampa versus AJ Styles, Booker T on commentary. Another very good match. They gave Ciampa a ton. AJ looked really good. Air raid crash. Uh, Styles clash attempts. Uh, Finally, he hit it, but Miz put Ciampa's foot on the bottom rope. Styles throws Miz into the timekeeper area. They brawl outside. Ciampa dives into the ring. AJ tries to get back into the ring, but uh, Miz is out there. He grabs his foot. The ref goes, seven, eight. You're thinking, oh, my God, another bad finish. But actually, he breaks free. AJ flies into the ring, right into a knee strike, right into the fairy tale ending. Ciampa beats AJ. And it is Tommaso Ciampa getting the championship match against Bobby Lashley next week on the show, which should also be a very good match. Then the main event, very good main event. It was Usos versus Ray and Dominic. And they gave Dominic a lot here. I think they they want you to think that he's not just some random, you know, geek, son of Rey Mysterio. Got a lot of big spots. Rey looked great. And uh, finally, Rey super kicks, uh, gets super kicked outside. Dominic is up on the post. They're going for something horrifying. But uh, he comes off, goes for the 619, gets hit with the 1D out of nowhere, pinned. Usos retain the titles. Judgment Day hits the ring. They're beating him down. And finally, Edge runs down to make the save, and they check on poor Dominic. Because there was a spot where as Edge is making his big comeback, he goes for the spear, but Rhea pulls Dominic in front, and so Edge spears Dominic. And so they're still teasing that uh, Dominic is going to ultimately join the Judgment Day. I guess we'll see. But I thought this was a much improved episode of Monday Night Raw. I thought so as well, too. And Ali and Ciampa are two sides of the same coin because you need to have layers. You need to have stars. That's absolutely something they need to make more of. Big, big stars. Not having Brock and Roman around all the time. You see what that's left you. But as you re-strengthen Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley and figure out what you're going to do with Theory and all that stuff. You need an undercard, and you need an undercard with credibility. And Ciampa and Ali can be those guys. They don't have to be the world champion. I don't think I'll ever see them wrestle, you know, main eventing a WrestleMania. That's okay. But I, to see them beat some people lower than them and make sure that they're established as a, at a higher level, I'm all for that making the U.S. title important again and making the Intercontinental title important again because you have it on two monsters. You have Lashley and you have Walter. This is the perfect time to make, you know, to try to re- Imagine those belts. And frankly, as you move forward, that might be more and more important because look at the world title situation. Look what they can offer. What can WWE offer somebody coming over from, you know, somewhere else? 
time off as world champion. And with the way the, the world champion is now, they don't have to be there all the time. And if you have serious people competing for the U.S. and Intercontinental titles and they mean something on those brands, then you don't actually have to have the world title around all the time and have it defended every month on pay-per-view. So that's really important to me you know making sure those titles get built back up again hopefully they see we see what they're doing right now with the women's division they still need bodies certainly for smackdown so we'll see how it goes over there as well too but to see champa to see ali featured at all was nice but to see champa kind of be put in a position where he's going to be relatively strong that's a good thing we need more people like that So a couple of you here are like, ah, Dom is a geek. He lost again. Listen, if Dominic is going to leave and join the Judgment Day, well, of course he should. That's the point. That's the angle. The angle is he can't win with his father. Every time he's in there with his father, he loses. And then Edge, who's supposedly friends with his father, spears him. Oh, boy. Okay, this all... this And the other thing is, uh, Jingo here goes, why would anyone want Dominic in their group? Seriously, from a kayfabe perspective, why would you want this geek? Bro, how many times did Wheeler Yuta get a win on AEW television before he was recruited by the Blackpool Combat Club? How many wins did Daniel Garcia get before he was recruited into the Jericho pre... The point is, the heels... The idea is the heels see something in the guy. They see that he can't win... They recruit him away from his father because they also want to screw his father with the idea that we'll teach this guy. We'll teach this guy to be an underhanded whatever and actually win matches. That's the storyline. It's been uh, the storyline has been done in wrestling for a thousand years. Dominic has to lose and get recruited by the heels. That's the story. I hope Ray reaches out to uh, Cameron Grimes right now because there are a lot of daddy issues that people want to settle for them. It's crazy. We'll talk about the lineup for NXT 2.0 after the break. Observer Live. Alvarez here. I don't understand these people's hatred for Dominic Mysterio. I don't get he's, it. He's a geek with a bad haircut. Dude, his his work is fine. He's actually pretty good. Yeah, if you compare him to Ray, yeah, he does jobs. He's young. You know what they should do? He should be re- up with Kendall Wyndham? He should be recruited by the Judgment Day. Oh, boy. And the Judgment Day says, you know what? Not only are we taking you away from your useless father, but your useless father never even gave you the mask. Oh. Therefore, we're going to give you a mask. And you have some awesome-looking heel mask that you give Dominic, so now he's got a mask on. He's like the heel ray. Dude, you could don't even tell me you couldn't do something with this. If you can't think of anything to do with Dominic Mysterio, then Call you Mel shouldn't Burrow. even be telling me anything about wrestling. Oh you don't get God. this business. Why don't they actually do him a favor and take him away from his father? And after they do that, they send him down to Joe Gacy because he wants to be a father figure for people. And he can be down in NXT and get a little bit more seasoning and work under that mask and become like something brand new because, unfortunately... I think he may, uh, unfortunately for him, may have been Dominic Mysterio for too long, and being on TV too early didn't help all that. I think Jingo here needs to put masks on his hands so he can't type anymore. Type this stupid stuff in the chat. Some, some like, how can you compare Dominic to Wheeler Yuta as a work? Bro, it's fake. It's a story. The story is the heels. See, the guy is having a, a ton of potential. We're not comparing real-life work. We're talking about a fake storyline. God help me. Now I'm yelling again. I got to turn on the air. NXT 2.0 is tonight. I can't wait. I don't care about the rest of you. I'm going to review it tomorrow because I'm not traveling. Isn't that exciting? It is. Yeah. Well, we're out of here. Landstorm, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.